Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized pieces. Today, I just want to bring to your attention just little subtle ways that uh, big industry tricks you into selling your, your Bitcoin, crypto, and digital assets. And this is just one example of many. And I think it's just one of the easiest to kind of get you wrap your head around so you can get your mind right as things go on as far as investment. We're also going to do a little bit of follow-up as far as the, uh, the CPI and inflation numbers, which were released this week. Talk about UBS, Daily Upside, which is a newsletter that I use to track all this information. And lastly, we're gonna take a look at some free software for portfolio evaluation, tracking, and taxes. Because I think, uh, you know, if you're in America or around the world, you need to do that stuff. So before we get into all those things, let's first take a look at what is going on into the market. So today it is Saturday, another great day here in Puerto Rico. I think the high is gonna be like 79, lows like 70, it's perfect, it's a great day. And uh, what do we have? Well, Bitcoin's doing pretty good. I mean, the market caps are bouncing around that 2.2 trillion number. So I'm happy. I'm good with that. I mean, uh, for what's been going on around the world, I'm good with that. Ethereum bounced back up to 3,300. And if you take a look at this this 24-hour uh, mark, everything's up. I mean, Tether but uh, it's just, and USD coin, but those are just uh, stable coins. But everything essentially is up across the board. And I like these numbers. So the basic principles always are and this is just investment opinion, not investment advice, is you, know, you buy the dips, then you, know, you can hold on to them for a long time or sell as they go up and take profits along the way. I personally buy the dips and just hold for a long time. I do take some profits a little bit because I like to have the dry powder for the next dip. And this is just one of those examples and things are looking pretty good. And let's see, is there anything that's really big, big across the board? I think there was a 6.4% for Uniswap. Well, that was looking pretty good. 3.4 for Filecoin, 5.4 for Mana. That's pretty good. So looking uh, excellent. And then also, I always I like doing this every so often, which is to take a look at uh, how you would do uh, versus Bitcoin. So right here, we're on CoinGecko. We're going to click on, let me scroll down here, click on Bitcoin, and it's going to pop over. And look at this. If you invested in, of course, Bitcoin's just zero across the board, but if you invest in other things, this is how you would do against uh, Bitcoin. Well, if you bought Ethereum, you'd be up uh, 1%. Binance Coin, 2.6. Uh, Solana down 0.3, and so on and so forth. So, and then Dogecoin down 3.5. So, this is just a way to see, as Ben in the Cryptoverse talks about it, bleeding against uh, Bitcoin. And uh, overall, you probably do pretty well just investing against uh, Bitcoin. Now, in the long run, it's debatable. So, we will see. And that's what's going on in the market today. So, I just want to do a quick CPI and inflation number follow up. Now, as you remember last week, they released the inflation numbers and it looks like they were, they say 7% and the uh, consumer price index was also going up. So how did that fare for the traditional markets? Because I believe that they are correlated. And if you take a look at the S&P 500, let me just blow that up so you can see it. Over the last five days, this was released on a Wednesday or so, uh, it actually dropped it a little bit in the market. And just a, a touch, then it went sideways and then it rebounded. Now, here we are. Also, if we took it, uh, like a look at NASDAQ, same type of thing. It took a little bit of a dip on Wednesday, uh, went down or sideways. Then Thursday, people got the news and then it just rebounded a little bit more. And then of course, for our market, it's looking pretty good. So even though those inflation numbers are high, the CPA, the consumer price index, and we can see it all around us, things are going up didn't really affect uh, the market too much. And actually the market just brushed it off because they're like, well, we already knew what's going on. So that was just the follow-up I just want to do just to see where things are going as far as, because we have to take a look at the big picture, right? The macro and see what's happening. Now I want to get into how they trick you. And this was uh, a nice little story <laughs> about UBS. And this was, I need to, I had to go back in time to take a look at what UBS was talking about. This is from May 19th. And, and sorry, be, before I go on, first of all, what is UBS or who is UBS? UBS, as of 2021, is the third largest bank in Europe with a market cap of 61 billion. It's considered a uh, important bank by the Financial Stability Board, I would say so. It has over 3.2 trillion in asset center management. Let me say that one more time. 3.2 trillion in assets under management. So it was interesting to me and kind of a, a bummer when they came out and they said, hey, UBS explains why you don't need crypto in your portfolio. This was May 19th, 2021, which we weren't surprised. It's a bank. What are they going to do, right? And it states right here, uh, CIO Mark ha uh, Hayfully nailed it, poured cold water on Bitcoin stressing its position that the crypto is a speculative asset. The portfolio benefits of holding cryptos 
are limited in our view. And then they went on Yahoo Finance and said just how much it sucked. And you're like, oh, okay, well, that is just one of those parts where not for us, right? Not for us, but for the individual investor who's looking at crypto and like, you know, well, uh, Warren Buffett said it, and then Paul Tudor Jones talked about it, and then Ray Dalio said it wasn't so good, and all these different uh, legends in, you know, in, in the space, they said it wasn't great, so I'm just going to shy away from it. Unfortunately, that's how it is, uh, because people need to hear it again and again and again from the people who are big in the space. Now, we know what happened with uh, Ray Dalio, with the Paul Tudor Jones, Bill Miller came out and said, hey, I got 50% of my total wealth into uh, Bitcoin. So when we see these articles, it's kind of like a bummer because it kind of shies people away, but there's a catch. And when we take a look back, coming over here, this was just a couple of months later from you today, July 14th, JP Morgan and UBS plan to onboard active crypto strategies, just strategies, just getting their feet wet. And it states here, uh, the onboarding of crypto strategies will take place through the bank's fund of funds. Fund of funds are pooled investment funds that primarily invest in the shares of other funds instead of equities, bonds, or other assets. UBS, the biggest Swiss bank, started exploring ways to offer crypto to its affluent clients this May. So they're like, well, you shouldn't have it. You guys shouldn't have it, but our rich clients actually should. And this leads me to my next point about how they trick you. This is from the Daily Upside. And the Daily Upside it is a free newsletter. I get it every single day. I've had it for like six months or so. Uh, this is what they sent out just a couple of days ago. I thought it was quite interesting. So what they sent, when in my little snippet here, was UBS' latest effort is targeting the not obscenely rich. So they actually are targeting the obscenely rich and the, then the un, uh, unobscenely. This is what it states. The bank... UBS claims half of the world's billionaires are clients, shipping to its 3.2 trillion in invested assets. On Tuesday, this was just this Tuesday, UBS announced it's owning in on a new target, U.S. clients with $250,000 to 2 million to invest. It plans to lure them in with a new digital platform. That's interesting. Maybe it's one of the things that they were talking about right here. And then to finish this up, the focus of the new platform will be convincing these well but not too well off customers to turn to their digital devices for investment advice. They will have access to video calls with advisors who can discuss financial strategies and will be granted access to ideas, ideas from UBS's chief investment office, which has 200 market forecasters around the world churning out research and guidance. So here's the thing. It's not like these people, these investors, these you know, 250,000 to a couple million people are just going to be bombarded with crypto. But I will, I will hypothesize or I will opine that I believe that they'll probably say, you know what, there's this new asset class and we shouldn't put 100% in there, but maybe like around one, two or 3% or something like that, because the asymmetric returns are pretty darn fantastic. And we've actually done a lot of research all the way back in the day. And now we're going to offer it to you. Now we don't want you to do that beforehand because we want to be the ones that you guys call the geniuses to bring it to your attention. Also, if that's not interesting to you, The Daily Upside is a free newsletter. You can sign up. There's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And it's one of those newsletters that I open up every day just to get a sense of what's going on in the macro finance world. So check that out. And this actually brings me up to my next point, because if we take a look at uh, the different mass adoption that is going on, this is just a, just a quick, quick snippet about ATM adoption going parabolic. And ATM, uh, Bitcoin ATMs that are just located throughout, throughout the U.S. and different parts of the world, uh, if there was no demand for ATMs, they wouldn't be making them as far as what, what, what for Bitcoin. But you can see uh, for the longest time, 2017, there was like none, 2019, 2020. And just around for some reason this year, it seems to just be exploding 10K, 15, 20, 25K and more on the way. Again, they're not making these machines because nobody's using them. They're making the machines because there's a huge amount of demand. And also, if we're going to take a look at what's going on globally, again, the macro sense, uh, mayor of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, pledges to invest a 1% treasury in Bitcoin and crypto. And I thought to myself, well, okay, so now we got the banks coming in. Now we've got these ATMs. Now we got these hedge funds. What if you had more endowments, retirement accounts, and even more hedge funds getting into it? Which also uh, takes me to this little point. We had done a video 
uh, just a little bit ago, actually the four or five days ago. And we had taken a look at, it was a Price Waterhouse Coopers uh, report that came out and they asked the traditional hedge funds, why aren't you offering this to your clients? And they said, oh, it's very easy. Here's the reasons. 67% said they were worried about the client reaction and the reputation risk, which makes no sense to me. Then regulatory uncertainty, I get that. Product uh, services, volatility of the assets, and then uh, lack of deep and uh, liquid uh, abilities of the asset. And then, of course, if you're talking about hedge funds, which were going all over the place, check a look at this. This we talked about a couple of weeks ago. There has been only three hedge funds that have beat a basic buy and hold from the S&P 500. You just go in the S&P 500, they give you the top 500 uh, businesses uh, throughout the world. And that's pretty much just buying and holding. Now these hedge funds go, you know what? We can hedge against that. We can beat them. Well, they don't because last year the S&P 500 hit 28%. Only Sendvest, Impala, and SRS at 46, 55, and 75% year to date, uh, year over year growth beat just a basic buy and hold. So how then will these hedge funds start to outperform these different places? Well, there's very few uh, hedge funds that will do it because they have no bravery, unfortunately, but there is one. We did, I did an interview with uh, Anthony Scaramucci. This was just uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, we had talked about how we bought this house here in Puerto Rico. And there's timestamps that you can, you know, just go uh, forward. But I asked him that exact same question here in question five. Why don't all hedge funds uh, just put one to three uh, percent into this asset class? And he had a pretty interesting uh, talk about it. I'll link that video so you can listen to the whole thing. It's kind of long and uh, just go from there. So again, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. There are just ways that they that they kind of do smoke and mirrors and say, no, 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 uh, don't invest into this. And then all of a sudden, if we just take a look at the just the data around us, we can see that yes, there's a lot of things going on, which means that uh, Bitcoin, crypto, digital assets are going up. All right, and that leads me to my last point. There's some free software. So uh, I use CryptoTrader.tax uh, for my uh, taxes. And for CryptoTrader.tax, they're actually rebranding into CoinLedger. And I wasn't for sure why they were actually going to do that. And uh, it's because they're going to have some free tracking software for your portfolio. And it goes even deeper than that. Not just the portfolio on centralized exchanges, but on decentralized exchanges as well. All the different things that you buy in OpenSea and the NFTs and everything else. And you can track all those things in this free software that they're going to offer. And then of course, the things that you use there, you can roll those into uh, the tax software, which is super easy to use. So I didn't understand why they did this. So I just brought on uh, David. He's one of the founders of CryptoTrader and I just asked some questions. So let's jump right in. Help us out. David, one of the founders of uh, CoinLedger and now well, CryptoTrader and CoinLedger, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's good to be back and just walk people through kind of what's been going on here and what we're still building towards into the future around making your crypto taxes as easy as possible. Um, so maybe Rob, I just quickly mentioned kind of why, why we're doing the rebrand from crypto trader to coin ledger. And, you know, you can ask any questions along the way. Yeah, exactly. So let's do this. Why don't you, first of all, take, you know, walk me through it. Let's, Let's talk about the elephant in the room, uh, which is Voyager, the integration, because I got to tell you, it sucked last year because I had to wait for the actual, I mean, I actually had to wait for a CSV file, which in this day and age is kind of, it's, it's weird to think about, but yeah, I actually had to wait for something. How awful. But now you guys are, it looks like you're gonna have a direct integration. Talk to us, how, how's that gonna work? And uh, when is that gonna actually happen? Because taxes are due soon. Yep. Yeah. So we're really excited. We announced the partnership that we're doing with the Voyager team, which is going to enable any any Voyager user to get a free 2021 tax report from that activity. And how that will work, as you alluded to, is we're going to launch it in February and Voyager users will just essentially be able to link their account within CryptoTrader.tax and what's becoming CoinLedger. No more yeah. CSV files will automatically pull in that Voyager transaction history to your crypto trader, you know, coin ledger account. Um, and then you can generate your tax port completely for free from there. And so that's coming in February. I know people are anxious to get in. There's some final touches being done, but we're really excited to, to launch that to everyone. 
Yeah, perfect. And then uh, for you at home, if you're, there's a link in the description, uh, you get, uh, I believe it's 20% off. And then also uh, there's a deep dive video, which I show exactly how to use the software, which is very simple from the time that I uh, opened up the software, got everything going, and then was finished, took me about 30 minutes. So it's very simple, but it's the same thing. You click on the button, add an account. It's going to go to Invest Voyager, direct API integration, then off you go. So there is, there is that part. Now there's two other things going on. First of all, you guys are rebranding uh, Crypto Trader to Coin Ledger. Why'd you do that? And then also talk to us about uh, the portfolio tracking. Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. So as we think about the long term vision, right, we're, we're building a company that's you know going to last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, even longer than that in this world, Web3 world that we are so excited about. And so in the long term, we want to be known for more than just tax. Now, in the short term, right, we we're very focused on the tax use case. But, you know, here's some never before seen stuff. This is what the rebrand is going towards. You can see on my screen right now. And so the name Coin Ledger, you know, we believe is stronger and more accurate in terms of where we want to take the business kind of as, you know, your financial life for Web3, right? Where whatever you're doing, whether you're on DeFi, CFI exchanges or play to earn NFTs, right? We want to become the ledger for all of that activity that's completely free to track and then also do your taxes. So that was kind of behind the rebrand and that rebrand is happening here end of January, beginning of February. But it's all the same users of CryptoTrader.tax. All of your stuff is going to be seamlessly moved to CoinLedger. Um, and so we're really, really excited about moving to that. And I think everyone's going to love the new products that we're building on the CoinLedger side. Yeah, so talk to us about, well, I mean, it makes sense you guys want to be here for a long time, but talk to us about the upgrades. What does that mean for the user? what is special about it and what's the, what's the improvements essentially yeah the really big thing and rob you're familiar with our software is crypto trader.tax is kind of this step by step just tax reporting right All right where with coin ledger completely free to use is you're going to be able to track your portfolio performance across all of your exchanges defi protocols blockchains wallets completely for free so this does not exist right now in CryptoTrader.tax, and it's what we've opened up the app to be much more free to use, right? We want to get help as many people as possible. So all these new tax reporting, or excuse me, portfolio tracking features are going live um, with the launch of CoinLedger, and many more will actually roll out after the first launch, right? We're, we're continuously shipping more and more. So that's the big thing is completely free to use is now tracking your portfolio. Um, and that's going to just continue to get better and better and better over time as we keep integrating with more and more uh, blockchains, wallets, exchanges, et cetera. Great. Okay. Awesome. And you said DeFi. I heard you right, right? DeFi. Yeah. So we're talking about like all the, all the DEXs that are out there and the different fees and the gas fees and all that stuff. So for the, so that'll be tracked through coin ledger. Exactly. And same, same goes for NFTs. So with oh. the rollout of CoinLedger, we're launching our complete direct Ethereum integration support. This is different than a lot of other companies out there. We've spent yeah. the past 12 months building out the proper way to do this. And so it'll simply be drop in your Ethereum wallet, connect your wallet, and we'll go and collect and sort and classify that data. You know, whether you're swapping with Uniswap or trading NFTs on OpenSea, and all of that will exist in your Coin Ledger account. And then, of course, you can one click generate your tax reports from that data. So, a lot, a lot of product has been built over the last year, and we're really excited to launch it with Coin Ledger. That's awesome. Okay, great. And then I'm sure as time goes on, there'll be more updates. We'll just have you back on so you can keep us abreast of the situation, and we'll go from there. Anything else that we missed or, uh, I mean, just those little things that you guys did. I'm sure it's not a, uh, so, you know, so fantastic. I think it's pretty great. But anything that we missed, we didn't talk about. Um, no, but you're right. Users can get 20% off everything using, you know, your link. You've been an awesome partner with us. And I'm excited to keep everyone abreast as to how we keep changing and adding more and more functionality as we keep going. You know, you guys can all reach us at CryptoTrader.tax for now. What will become Coin Ledger? Ask us questions. We're happy to help with any tax questions you might have. But uh, thanks as always for having me on, Rob. Thanks. All right. Thanks, David. Let's jump back. All right. So thanks again, David, for coming by. I really appreciate it. Uh, look, if you like today's video, you found a little value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.